Okay, Bank Holiday Monday, we're off the film festival. We are here with the filmmakers behind Are You Hostile? Are they hostile? Mark Williams and Griff Griffiths. Good yes. afternoon, everybody. Hello, Thank hello. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us. Um, Wonderful. Mark, so you've been to the festival before. With I certainly Trevor. have, yeah. yeah. Um, what inspired the kind of change of track from video nasties to punk music? Well, it, it was sort of planned. I think when I was, um, I think the last time I was here on stage and I did announce that we yeah, were going to do this film. So, yeah, you know, so well, it's got to be made now, isn't it? I think, you know, that's the, in, uh, the important thing, you know. But, yeah, I, I just like doing documentaries. So, and because I'm from Croydon originally, this was um, the inspiration. Then I met Griff. I mean, when, did we, when did we meet? Did we met? Was, was, we oh, were watching. A few years ago, oh, we? when you we know, first we met, yeah. We haven't met him for about 40 years, something like that. He came to uh, the first, one of our first ever gigs. At the, when the, it was my parents, uh, he said, Show him the film. It was my parents' anniversary, and I was 14, so we couldn't get a gig. And he turned up, from friends of mine from another school, yeah. and you had the dog collar on. Yeah, I had, I had a boiler yes. suit, yes. I had the clash and the pistols all over it. I was all punky, and I had hair then, you know, so I could have sort of, you know. All my hair spiked up, and this dog collar. And uh, the problem was, it was a boxer dog, Shandy, I always remember her name, and uh, she had fleas, so I was sort of. Yeah. Well, that's. I was like that all night, you know, on there. So and I had a beer, I think I had my first beer there as well. Oh, so, that was, yeah, uh, that, that, yeah, that and more we get, than that. And we get a pint of beer, we're only about what, 12. No, we were. <laughs> I think we were older than 12. <laughs> yeah. well, and we met, he came to that gig, and then after. F I hadn't seen you. I was across slightly, hadn't I? Yeah. And then we were watching the Slits film, Here's to Be Heard, down at the David Lean Cinema. Yeah. And I looked over at the bar, and there he was. Oh, I said, oh, Williams, yeah. oh, Griffiths, there you are. So we yeah. fancy doing a documentary. He said, yeah. And then that's how it came about, really. We I had the was COVID. At, I was actually chairing the Q&A that night. It was funny. You that's know. it, you so were. It was all Adrian Winchester was in the film. It was a guitarist and bad actors. Um, yeah, he, he sort of arranged, he said, we could come and do the Q&A, and we had Tessa Pollitt from the Slits. It was a good Q&A. And the film was director, William E. Badgley, who did, the film was called Here To Be Heard. He just went on, he went on to do the Don Letts movie, was it Rebel, Rebel Dread, wasn't it, I think, you know, so, which was very good. And yeah, so I had him on the, st on the stage and yeah, sort of moderated that, you know. Yeah, you were very good, they're very professional. Yeah, yeah, and then we met Griff, I met Griff at the bar probably, yes. funny enough. <laughs> well, funny enough, because we had our premiere for Are They Hostile there and we've got the record and it will probably never be beaten now for seeing the most alcohol in two hours. Yeah, the it, yeah. It I up. think they did something like uh, 200 cans or something. And we had the, we haven't got any other, are they hostile lager here? Have we? We well, I bought some, I yeah. bought some, this is my birthday yesterday. I bought, I meant to be six oh, cases, I bought oh. 36 cases turned up. And we had this, Griff contacted Cronk's Brewery and yes. um, they created this lager for us. Are they hostile so lager? The, oh, yeah, the actual lager. So I've, perfect, I've got, perfect. I've got something like 422 cans yeah. to drink when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> I share it with you lot. <laughs> We'll put some out. <laughs> <laughs> Many happy returns. Thank you very much indeed. I was 60 years. Can you believe that? 60. Where's that? What's, 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 what's going yeah, on there? Well, well, it's funny because I, 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 was, I was 60 last, um, last Wednesday. Griff was 60 yesterday, wasn't yes, he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, you're the baby. Yes. You're the baby. Well. well, there's... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just can I say that online. I go, go fuck yourself. <laughs> you didn't catch that in the back. There was a, one of the songs. My first ever professional recording was I done when I was thirteen and a half, fourteen. Now that was engineered and produced by the two original members from the band Mud. You know, Tiger yeah. Feet, Cat Crypt in, yeah. which came out last year on the album Are They Hostile? So it was in the can for forty six years. And a friend of mine who plays for the Hollies and Killing Joke. He was playing with Mud on Friday night. So I went along on the guest list to see Great Mud. Nice. And I, we had our picture taken with uh, the, Rob Ray Styles and Rob Davis, who are a major, major songwriting duo now. But so, uh, yes, yeah, so, and I had my picture taken after 46 years the record came out. That's a nice story, isn't it? Yeah. And he, he did he, co was it Rob Davis co wrote the Kylie Minogue yeah. hit? Uh, can I can't get, get you out, out of my head. head. You know, yeah. Oh, he's done co loads of stuff. Co wrote, you see. Yeah, they've they they done yeah, loads yeah, of so, stuff. Yeah. In fact, they were playing on Friday, they were playing, we had a number one hit with this, and they played Tiger Feet, and we had a number one hit with this, and they played, like, oh boy, we had a number one hit with this, and they played Cat Crypt in. They were a major, major band, incredible. band from the glam days. Absolutely anyway. incredible, wasn't it? So I'm just ask one question, and then I'm going to open it out to the audience. How much footage did you shoot, and how did you possibly? I think it, again, you know, the craziest thing we probably shot about nine or ten hours. 
So, and then it's in the edit. So it's a lot of, you know, a lot of work. And obviously, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on, south, on the south coast. Griff is in Croydon, so we're sort of backwards and forwards. But we can do it, we can do it, you know. And he's, you know, we're swapping files all over the place and that. But we sort of whittled it down, didn't we, to... Cause, so we can't have a two-hour film. So we sort of dropped this one down to 99 minutes. I think the first cut was about 110 minutes. <coughs> So, uh, yeah, you know, try you, to make it more palatable. And, you know, every time yeah. I watch it, I think, oh, we could have yes, taken that Yes, we, we were saying that just that now. Out, but you know. can't have a documentary film without the, uh, that, that big questions being asked and yeah. being answered in there. There has to be some information in there. But it's difficult to get hold of any music as well because there was no footage back then. Back in 78, 77, 79, there was just no... You know, the only person with a camera was Don yeah. Letts, wasn't he? He was the only person in London with a camera. Yeah. You know, nobody else did. And, yeah, sort of as per usual, after we finished the first cut, Old oh, people coming out and I say, oh, actually, got, I've got a clip of this, or, or we find a clip of the bad actors or something. You're quite an obscure band, aren't they? Yes, you know, yeah, so. yeah. And they found it after the fact, so we, we've sort of hastily edited that back in, because you need that musical... And it, and it was good this one because we were in conjunction with Damage Good Records, the record company. So well, said, when we first use what you like. You well, know, when, so we, when, we, when we when we when we when we when we filmed that, we had no idea that it had legs. This little project of ours, it was just going to be a bit of fun. Oh. And since then, we got hold of Damage Goods, and they we didn't have any idea that the, no. the, the lager was going to be made. We had, no. we had our own beer. We had no idea there was going to be a CD out or a vinyl album, you know, proper proper vinyl out. I had no idea any of that was going to no. happen. Oh, it, it was funny because we we met Damage Goods in a pub up in uh, yes. Kings across to Lexington and, and we, um, we kind of persuaded we did, him we to sort say, of did the album deal didn't you, you yeah know, yeah you, over you, a Griff, pint Griff does all the album you know yeah well I, I, made, I made sure that he thought it was a good idea that he, he went with us really yeah. wasn't it yeah and, no, and, I, don't know and, where and he I said oh let's have a film <laughs> let's do a film as well and you know it, everybody was up yeah yeah it was just, it, it kind of evolved didn't it and it's still evolving now it's so hard for you know a, a no budget independent Absolutely. film and, and trying to get any you know any coverage anywhere is a nightmare. But, you know, we've got a few, well, we got a few radio and things. Last, we? last yeah. year, we were... Um uh, they, was it, no, yeah, last year when it came out, we were voted top three film of 2022 in the Viva La Rock magazine, and that's yeah. a well-respected publication. We were beaten by the Bowie film, which I think had a 20 yeah. billion, squillion pound budget, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think the re-release of Rude Boy by The Clash, yeah, Clash and then yeah. it was us! So I'm, like, I'm happy with that, you know. Yeah, I'm very happy with in, that. You know, but, it, you know, it's, it's a very niche, eh? Uh, telling you the, about the Croydon scene, but it's nice that nobody really knows about it, uh, unless you know. So they might want to watch the film, you know. Uh, well, we we'll hope it's good. Yeah. Um, right. Audience questions. Please keep your hmm. raise your hand, and we'll get a mic over to you. Don't be shy. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got one there. Oh God! Well, it, it kind of went on for a few weeks. <laughs> it ended, ended and started again. Ended and started again. Well, we got we got banned from a couple of pubs, didn't we? Yeah. And we we broke a few beer glasses. That was yeah. our budget. Was we got banned from two or three pubs, and I think we broke about seven beer glasses in three yeah. pubs. We weren't we weren't misbehaving. We were just we were all drunk. But the, it went, the party went on for quite some time. Yeah, like but, 20, 24 hours, I think, for the for the premiere. I think. Yes. Like that, you know. And that are they hostile <laughs> lager? Certainly does think it's the point, doesn't it? Yeah. It really does. It's a lovely drink, by the way. <laughs> Other brands are available. Yeah, but don't you think it's wonderful? We've got our own, our own Are They Hostile Lager. I think it's just such a wonderful thing. It started off with me making those bottles that I gave to each guest. We were just big pictures that my son, my son created in Munich, and I just stuck them on bottles of. The, like I took the labels off, and that kind of it, it morphed into actually getting hold of the Kronk's Brewery, and they produced their own limited edition Are They Hostile Lager. Now, what a great story is that? It's wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> Any other hands? Oh, go on, Dave. You can ask a question, Dave. Any of the bands? Well, the strange thing is, since that, the Fanatics have now reformed. Their drummer, Spanner, he, he's got a very successful business in... Um, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's his mum picked that name. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. His mum, Monkey Wrench. <laughs> he's, he's, always, he's always fair. Yeah, and, 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 and his dad's set of sockets. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I like, love Spanner it. runs a very successful, uh, I think he's like a multi-millionaire now, he runs a very successful company <laughs> selling products for ski, uh, disabled skiers. That's probably where the Spanner things come, comes from. But he... 
I don't know what it is, but he, he's out of the country for five months of the year, so the Fanatics have reformed, and I'm now playing drums for the Fanatics at a couple of festivals later on in the year. Um, and I've always wanted to play with the Fanatics. The bad actors, they, they've started, re, they've reformed. It's, it's down to us that this has happened. It's down to yeah. the film. And, and it's something that we feel very proud of, really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and go, going back to the Fanatics, um, we got the first gig, didn't we, after yes. 40 years? And on the back of that, the guy, it was a record show. Yes, Rice called, uh, Rice, uh, on the back of that, the guy Tony the record Smith. label, he got, actually, they actually got a deal. So yes, got, got a deal. A, he paid out, so. We're quite proud of that. Very proud of it. I mean, we, we, yeah. we jokingly say on to our friends, oh, yeah. it's our fault, but we're really pleased that that's happened. It's, it's, it's sparked the love of music for all these middle-aged men. I mean, I, I'm still playing drums now anyway, but I sparked the love, love of music for, for middle-aged men. And when I play along to Are They Hostile, back the, um, the Are They Hostile track, which was called, I think, 15, it is fucking hard work, mate. Yeah. Hard work. I have to slow it down <laughs> <laughs> to keep up with the pace. <laughs> He likes the slow numbers. Were you in any, uh, any bands yourself? Were you in any bands yourself? I, I was in, yeah, I was in a band with a friend of mine called Peter Powell, mutual friend, Peter who Powell. we've not seen for years. But I can't, it was so hazy, I can't even remember the name of the band. But Did you really, play an instrument then? Yeah, Mark? I played, played the guitar, and he actually gave me a guitar. But, and... But and we rehearsed at your dad's studio. Yes. It was a, yeah, proper studio in yeah, Croydon, like Seth Croydon. Um, but I got the sack. We couldn't get up on a on a on a Saturday morning, so I used to lay in bed till two two p.m. something like that. So wow. that was the end of that. And you know, it's a shame. But I, I'd love to know the name of the band. <laughs> the few well, names yes. sort of resonate yeah, there. I, you know, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen Peter Powell for years. Yeah. Any other audience questions? I've got one last one. Oh, and that's the end of it. Oh, I could talk all day. You can talk all day to Kevin upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> we've, got, we've, got, we've got our own special room, me and Kevin. Um, what are you working on next, Mark? Right. Um, and well. Yeah, the, the next project, um, which I'm, I'm pleased somebody's asked, actually. I've planted especially in the audience for that. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do, I'm gonna do a film on the, um, the Brighton punk scene, oh, 78 to 8, 1980. It's going to be called Voltage 78, so I'm looking forward to working on that. Um, what's, the, what's the relevance of this title? Uh, again, you know, uh, well, I used to go to Brighton a lot. So, and again, this record, this it came out in two albums. I think it's Voltage 78, Voltage 79, and Voltage 3 records, actually. Voltage 80. And, um, yeah, I remember going down there buying this very uh, Pacific record label with all these bright bands like Piranhas yeah the Piranhas who did a, went on big hits Peter and the Test Tube Babies bands like that you know what was their song do, 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 do. Yeah, Tom Hart to, yeah Tom Hart yeah which was produced by Pete Waterman who no, uh, again you got that hook up well, with, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, so yeah and uh, a friend of mine who runs a record shop in Worthing Train of Thought Records, Kev Howe, he said, oh yeah, let's, let's do something. We'll probably go, you know, a lot of the venues will go around the old, old venues, you know, like the Howe, Ambroon, place like that, the top rank of suite and things like that in Brighton, and then see some stories there, and get some of the band back together again, so uh, yeah. Should be pretty good, yeah. And uh, I've got, to, uh, well, I've just, I've, I've just had a book released actually about my life, which is it is doing really well. And uh, my publishers have asked me to write a second one, which I'm working on. And I'm in a, I'm playing a couple of tribute bands, a, band, a, a jam tribute band. I'm always busy. There's always something going on. But yeah, an author. Can you believe that? An author. Have you kicked over this way, though? Have you been your band? Have you yeah, like, we're yeah. always we're kicking all over. Yeah. So my yeah. book is called "I Was the King of Spain" because I was a professional comedian for five years. I, I had a f very successful furniture company which I sold because I, I, I had a breakdown. I ended up in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an institution thinking I was the king of Spain for six months. And I used that as a as a professional comedian when I came out, and uh, then I've now got a book about it. So there we are. You can't write that. Well, in fact, I did. <laughs> Copies available in for you. <laughs> I, I, I sold one today, actually. I wasn't expecting. Well, I, when I, I, we, I went to Spain on holiday with about 20 mates, and one of the guys bought it from Waterstones, I think, in uh, the airport. And we were in a restaurant, and the table in, the, in Spain, the result it was, was wonky. Yeah. So he put the book under there, and the, bloody, the, the waiter, or the owner of the restaurant, bought it off me just to keep under the table. So the, <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. Did, did you sign it, though, as well? I don't think he needed to be signed. I should have signed the table. <laughs> but anyway, I've got some books for sale if you want to buy one. <laughs> and we've got vinyl as well. What a story. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Have a round of applause, please. Thank you. Thanks, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.